noticed your employees doing the bare minimum lately? Maybe they're slacking off, missing meetings or coming to the meetings but they're unprepared, taking forever to respond to emails, maybe even missing deadlines. You may have an employee who has quietly quit on you. So what does it mean to quietly quit? In this video, I'm going to give you four signs that you can look for to see if you have an employee who has quietly quit on you. As a business owner, I recently encountered this at my organization. We have about 28 employees and I noticed that there were some dips in productivity amongst some of my top performers. Now, I know that life happens. I know that things go on and it causes people not to be able to be as productive as they, as they may have been in the past. However, whenever it becomes habitual and some of the reasons are not there anymore, you have conversations with them, but you just can't put it together, it is very possible that these people have quietly quit on you. Now, I want everybody to know that burnout is real, okay? Burnout is a thing. Whenever you talk about quietly quitting, this is somebody who has mentally checked out on you and your organization. Now, we'll talk about all those reasons and things of that nature, but I don't want anyone to mistake burnout for quietly quitting. Now, quietly quitting is one way that people who are burned out cope. And so that is important to know on how to actually deal with the situation. But first, what you have to do is to identify, do you actually have someone who is quietly quitting on you? Now, what are these four signs that can help you recognize if you have a quiet quitter on your team? Number one is cynicism and negativity. And so what happens is these folks may start to talk negatively in team chats. Uh, they may actually start saying snide remarks to management. Um, and there's always gonna be somebody usually in your organization who's going to come back and tell you you if that did not occur in your presence. Now you may have some people who are bold enough, which I actually appreciate, to actually come to you in the first place and tell you these negative comments and these thoughts. It's going to be up to you to recognize whether that person's quietly quitting or if they're actually coming to you with legitimate reasons that just happen to be negative. One way to determine this is, is this person coming with just the negativity or also coming with possible solutions on how to fix whatever issues that may be going on in the organization? So you want to make sure as a manager that you are careful because when people start spreading negative things throughout the team, it decreases your entire team morale. And you do not want that as a toxic culture starting at your organization. Number two is gonna be pretty obvious if you have the right metrics in place already to measure productivity. And so what you wanna see is this person's productivity may be different or lower than what it has been in the past. And then you also may see that it's going to be a whole lot lower than the rest of your team members and usually it's just enough so that you won't notice until you actually do notice. So you want to make sure that you have the right tools in place that's going to monitor what the productivity of your team members look like and also what are the benchmarks so that if you have this in place and this data is always running you'll automatically know that hey somebody's dipping they're dipping habitually maybe there's something going on here that needs to be addressed. Number three is going to be increased absenteeism so this person's misses a lot of work and everybody knows that life happens there's accidents that occur there's sickness that occurs um, there's kids that may have an issue there's always going to be life happening events where people are going to have to miss work however if you start to notice that this person is not working their entire shift they need to get off early they're not working every day you give them opportunities to make this work up but they're not making it up uh, their hours have been decreased all of these things that lead to them missing more work could very well be related to legitimate life events and what's happening is they're quietly quitting on you as a way to get better work-life balance for themselves so, so that they can actually deal with the life events that's going on so in this particular case again if you have the right data metrics to know who's missing work is this out of the norm what excuses are they giving you when they do miss work you might be able to quickly identify if you have someone who is about to or is quietly quitting on you. And number four is engagement. So what you're going to see is lower engagement or disengagement from this set of people altogether or this person altogether. So in the past, these people may have shown initiative in meetings or to pick up new projects and volunteer for certain things. And now they're not doing that. Um, they may be very quiet during meetings. They may not participate in outings or any group events that you may have, especially in a remote work environment.
environment, you already have people that are isolated. Uh, so I know what we try and do is we try and send out, um, we try and do some lunches uh, where we send out Grubhub cards so that everybody can grab a dinner uh, or grab lunch. And we may have a meeting where we talk about that during lunch. Uh, we may also do some evening events, especially around Christmas and the holidays uh, where we actually try and involve the remote team. However, I will be honest, we have done a very poor job of that recently and I do want to do better at that because you want to make sure that your remote team is feeling part of the um, organization and a part of the team. And so if you have those events and you plan those events and your person is not showing up or they are showing up but they're not participating in the games uh, that may be going on or um, they may not show up at all. These are things that show that they're disengaged or they have low engagement because you remember people who quietly quit, they're just trying to do the bare minimum. They just want to come to work and do their job and they want to go home. They're not giving you anything extra. Um, sometimes they're not even giving you the bare minimum, but most of the times they'll give you the bare minimum because remember these people are quietly quitting for, for whatever reason they don't quit, they can't quit or they won't quit. Um, so they're just quietly quitting on you by doing the bare minimum hoping that you won't notice. Now, all four of these cynicism, productivity uh, changes or dips, increased absenteeism and being disengaged, one just separately by itself may not necessarily say you have someone who is quietly quitting. But if you can put two, three, or all four of these together, then there's a high probability that you have someone who is already quietly quit on you or who's on the verge of quietly quitting on you. Now, I do feel it's very important to talk about burnout versus quietly quitting. I know we briefed upon it at the intro of this video, but now we know the four signs to look for someone who may be quietly quitting those signs also look like somebody who may be burned out. Um, however, what I want you to know is people who experience burnout are usually people who are already top performers. These people are really sold in on your company. They're sold in on their job. They ultimately always want to do a good job. They're overachievers, some people may call them, but they're really sold on doing a good job. Quietly quitting for someone who is burned out is an enemy. These people really do not want to quietly quit because remember, in their mindset is to always want to do a good job. So when they're forced to make the decision to not be the overachiever, to not meet the deadlines, to not be as productive, to do just the bare minimum, that goes against everything in their mindset because they always want to do a good job. They want to do what is right. What happens is folks that are burned out, they give, they give, they give, they give. You pile stuff on them as a manager. They pick up the slack from somebody who's truly quietly quitting. They're working all these hours. They're picking up extra assignments and what happens is they've given 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 until they're completely emotionally drained when that happens that person has to make a decision are they going to come to you as the manager and voice what their grievances are letting you know honestly and candidly that they're having these issues and if they do that you as the manager have to make sure that you're not dismissive of those especially when you know this person is your top performer I like to say people who are burned out they give and they give and they give until they just can't go another further. Okay, they just they're done. I have given everything I can. I am being productive. I am overproductive, but I still have a lot of work left to do. This is very common in the world of Medicare and the industry that we're in. The regulations, the guidance, that stuff's always changing. There's never a shortage of work when it comes to the industry that we're in. Okay, there's never a day where we go to work and say, hey, we got through everything today, or hey, we don't have enough work. There is always a lot of work to do. So just be mindful that burnout is a real thing and what you don't want to do is have your people who are burned out to actually choose quietly quitting as a way to cope because that's not good for you as a company and it's also not good for the employee because it goes against their mindset. I never liked working a job that I absolutely don't want to be there. I think that is the most miserable place to be is actually to have to go to work and know that you hate your job and as a business owner I never want to set 
that atmosphere for any of my employees. I remember I used to work at Walmart in York, South Carolina. It was already a 45, 50 minute drive for me and I absolutely hated it. Okay, I hated this job. I, I would go and get to work and I would sit in the parking lot and I would hold back tears because I didn't want to go in. And so you probably say, well, Renata, why did you work it? Why didn't you just quit? Well, remember people who uh, quietly quit or people who are burned out or people who show some of those signs that we saw earlier, they don't quit because either they can't quit or they actually like the job and they want to actually do better and stay. In my instance, I couldn't quit. I needed the income. There was no other place for me to pick up and go at that time. I needed the finances, so I had to stay and work. So just be mindful of that. You never want to set an atmosphere as a business owner or as a manager, or even as an employee where other people don't want to come to work because you set up a toxic environment. Hopefully you're not panicking saying, oh my gosh, I've got some quiet quitters on my team and I have got to go and do something. Wait, what I want you to do first is I want you to watch this next video that is going to talk about the five reasons why someone may quietly quit. It's important to understand why why someone may quietly quit on you so that we can then address what you need to do to prevent it um, and keep somebody from quietly quitting on you. So I encourage you to go right on over and watch the next video so you can learn more about quiet quitters and how you can address them in your team.